sabe? Uh, pardon? Is it not blurry? Yeah, a little bit. I thought it was my glasses, but it's maybe it's uh, out. It's not. The background's not blurred. Okay. Julie's parking now, so we should be ready to start in a in a minute. <clears throat> Did it just snow like today or yesterday or something? Yeah. Snowed last night. Last night and said this morning. Thank you. Yeah, the person got here from the airport faster than I did. Yeah, I can, like, I'm part of a piece of this. Oh, I... Me? Okay, um, wait another minute. I don't think so. No. Well, let's see. Sometimes it'll give me an hour times more. Gives us incentive to move fast. <laughs> Motion to open the April 4th, 2024, New Paltz Town Board Meeting. Second, Julie. All in favor? Aye. 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 And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I believe in the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Make a motion to approve the agenda. Does it have executive session on it? If yes, it does. Okay. Uh, second. Kitty, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, uh, announcements. All town offices will be closed uh, to the public on April 19th for Records Management Day. And are there any other public announcements? Yes, I have one about, uh, come on, open up here. I have one about um, Earth Day, oh. and Earth Day will be April 20th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Reformed Church on Huguenot Street. This year's theme is Planet versus Plastics. This is a free, family-friendly, zero-waste event with children's activities, food, nature walks, and live music. Take a stroll down Huguenot Street among the United Nations flags and visit the rail trail to view educational signs about how to live more sustainably. Sponsored by Interfaith Earth Action, the Caring for Creation Committee of the Reformed Church, and the New Paltz Climate Action Coalition. 
Any other announcements? I do have one. Uh, the Millbrook Preserve uh, nonprofit is hosting a spring festival on Saturday, April 27th from one, one to three at uh, the lawn next to Duzine Elementary at the top of Sunset Ridge. There will be a lot of family-friendly activities, hands-on um, activities for the children especially. And anyone is uh, very welcome to join, it's free. The rain date is the next day. All right. And I would like to open the public comment. So if anyone here has a uh, public comment, I uh, can please come up. We try to keep them to three minutes, but we're not gonna shut you down, but just be aware. And so you can come on up, Mr. Loza. Good evening. My name is Leonard Loza. I am a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm not here to speak on their behalf. But what I would ask though, is in the future, if any appointees are going to be appointed to any committee, it might be a good idea to ask that committee for a recommendation by interviewing that person also. So that's it. Thank you. Kim. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Here or anyone online, if you raise your hand um, and you know, unmute. If not, we will move on to uh, an interview for a potential recreation director, Michael Burke. If you, I, sorry, let me get a chair for you. Hmm. Welcome. Welcome back. Hello, hi. You want just uh, tell tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in the job? Sure. Um, so I, um, well, first of all, I'm interested in the job. I have been um, kind of in and around kind of recreation of New Paltz the last, I don't know, five or six years. Um, I've been um, involved with uh, mostly with uh, the New Paltz Baseball Softball Association. I'm on their board, um, mostly with the softball um, community, uh, the um, kind of director of operations. So up at Field of Dreams, I kind of live up there, uh, kind of spend most of my time. And uh, I've been, um, over the last few years, I've been working with um, previous rec director, Chuck. Mm -hmm. um, so I've gotten to know him and you know, once um, you know, I talked with him a lot, so I kind of got to know a little bit about what he did um, previously, you know, on the, on the peripheries. And, um, you know, last year when he told me he was retiring, I was like, oh, kind of interesting to apply for that. But I um, I do real estate and um, I was like, yeah, I was kind of, you know, pretty busy with that. So I kind of let it go. And then when I heard that the job was still open and kind of this whole lawsuit with the real estate and kind of got it's getting kind of, I don't know if you've heard about it. Yeah. The whole, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. I haven't. Uh, we're, well, we're not involved. We're it's, not a, involved. it's a okay. national anyway, thing. It's a whole national thing. It's, oh. Yeah. It's, anyway, it's, I was like, you know what? I should find an action. So I kind of circled back around when I saw this was open. Um, anyway, look, I bring it all back. I um, I just like being around the whole idea of being with you know families and kids about recreation and um. I don't know if that's just kind of what brought me kind of back to that. I've done a lot with operations um, in the past. I worked at the Woodstock Film Festival. I was in charge of the operations department. Um, so I have that kind of background where I can, um, you know, just kind of be in charge of bringing lots of different pieces of departments together, um, budgets, writing grants, that kind of thing. So I've done a lot with that sort of thing. So. How long? You said you were with the Woodstock Film Festival? Yes, I worked there for about... Uh, say eight years or something like that in various capacities. I started there as print trafficking and um, so volunteer coordinator. What did till so twenty fifteen? Yeah, yeah, about that. Yeah, okay. that sounds about right. Yeah, and um, and I just kind of worked my way up where eventually I was operations director. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty high up. It's a very small operation. We only yeah. had like three or four full time uh, people, including the um, the founders of the festival at the time. So. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have any experience with seniors, senior programming? Um, not, no, not really. Um, not, 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 I wouldn't say that now. So you're very familiar <clears throat> with the field of dreams and how it's used. What about the community center? Uh, a little bit. I know that um, I uh, most of what my experience there. I mean, we have our meetings there. Um, I know that that is um, part of the job as well. Um, I used to take my my son there for for the little kids uh, playtime. For I did that too. It was yeah. awesome. So uh, I do have a little experience just going there for for things. Um, have so you ever I, seen the calendar to see what kind of you know, activities? Are uh, a little bit. Um, I haven't gone to a lot of them there, so um, you know I'm not super familiar with it. But I, I have my studies here and there because um, I've gone to a few things. Um, we have our board meetings there for the softball, baseball, softball. We have our board meetings there. Um, sometimes, not all the time, but we do have them when we have them in person. We have them there. Yeah, so you're familiar how with how people make reservations and follow yeah, up and yep, things. Yeah, like I know they go through the the record. Yeah. But, yeah. So you said you kind of. Um, spent time with Chuck and you know, so, but what do you understand is the, the role of the rector at Um I mean I know that he works with you know uh, I know there's a lot to do with budget budgeting yes oversee I know there's some uh, communication with other departments as far as like um, uh, highway department I know he works with highway department pretty closely um, scheduling for you know like so the rec center the fields and all that um, mm -hmm. Those are the things that you know I'm intimately aware of. I'm sure he did other things behind the scenes that that's that that's a lot of it. Yeah, I know those are the major things he worked with. Are you aware there's actually a job description? I did look at the job description. Yes, um, my math is not terribly good at, but I did read the job job description online. Yeah, so it it is actually a a civil service position, and when we first posted it, there was no one on the list. Uh, but because this has taken so long, there are now several people on the list. And so under the civil service rules, Gene can correct me on this. We need to contact them as well and make sure that they're not interested in it. Um, and then if they're not, the person we hire will then be provisional until they take the civil service test as well. So, uh, and it, you know, it varies on how frequently they offer those tests that I kind of get that partially right Jean. so do we have any active applicants from the civil service program not at this time but but we do need to make sure they're not interested they have the right of refusal yes. and and we've contacted them and offered them the right of refusal thank you yeah. so and we haven't heard back yet right there's a certain time period of time where they get the block time yeah okay. Um, yeah, so the senior programming is, I mean, you know, you know mm -hmm. our population, so you know that seniors are very active here in, in these community centers. So that would be a, a part of, um, you know, that you would be responsible for, or the director's responsible for, and maybe getting creative about what are some other things that could happen here to support. Yeah, that's a lot of what happens during the day, but then, you know, obviously you're, much more familiar with the stuff that kind of goes on behind the scenes that no one really yeah. knows about the, you know, baseball, soccer, you know, yeah. all of that, which I, I don't know if people realize how many kids, you know, go up, go up to the field of dreams on a Saturday morning yeah. and you'll see 800 kids playing soccer, yeah. you know, yeah. or yeah. baseball. Yeah. Right. And I'm, I'm not familiar with that aspect of our program. So was Chuck, there for all of those games? Uh, I, no. I don't know how often no, it, up there. his job it wasn't to be there to during the games, but okay. to make sure that things were set up. So he would work with Chris to say, okay, well, there's a tournament this Saturday. Could we make sure we do some of the mowing? The the the, the, the sports leagues would contact Chuck and say, we have a, we're having a big tournament on Saturday. Can we make sure the fields are in good condition? And then okay. Chuck would work with, with uh, Chris, you know, or, you know, getting the fields ready, starting right around now. You know, that's what, you know, already started. Like, so making sure that, you know, the, the, the mounds are correct and the bases. So there's a lot of that behind the scenes stuff that goes yeah, on. We wander up every once in a while. Yes. To, and just to meet with people and make sure, and then kind of get the feedback and, okay. but, um, 
I think, I think a lot of people don't realize that that's a, a big part of the job. No. Yeah, it says good knowledge of the operational requirements of the recreational facilities. Um, so you've, you've worked with budgets, um, but have you also done like not only developing and proposing the budget, but then doing the, the maintenance and control, the fiscal you know, control? Um, you yeah, I mean, with the Woodstock Film Festival, I, I definitely, um, I didn't handle the budget. Um, that was kind of my boss, but I definitely was, um, you know, privy to the budget and had to work within that. Um, I do have um, now, though, and obviously it's not a huge budget like I would have to work with now. Um, huge. Wink, yeah. uh, <laughs> wink. Yes. <laughs> yeah. In perspective, but I do. Um, I have. I run a. a couple travel softball teams and also with the tournaments that I run softball tournaments I you know I have budgets for that that I I specifically run those you know keep track of money and all that so um yeah so that's my direct experience which I do you know right now you have to prepare reports that go to somebody or other about all that those no, because I directly run those. It's, me, I, it's but I mean the tournaments are my own business basically, and the travel teams are part of the the soft New Falls baseball softball. But it's kind of like an offshoot that I run myself. You know, kind of like a side um, portion of the of the organization um, that I do and keep my own separate uh, budget for. So, is this a is this a full time job? Yes. Yes. So, a full time job with in all the other stuff we're doing is that going to work out? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the you know right tonight, right now, I am doing real estate full time, but it's very flexible, and I can easily move it to part time. It's you know it's an independent contractor sort of thing, and the other stuff I do is you know the. The, the softball stuff is volunteer. It's not a. It sounds like you're very. I do a lot. It's yeah, it's it's, like, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a job, but it's it's volunteer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So would you continue running the tournaments? Uh, I, I yeah, I, to use it to we use that for money to to support the travel team and so, stuff. Yeah. And you have supervised other people. You have. Hired and oh yeah, that was uh, part of the uh, what's that called? That was part of the job. Yeah. Is there anything that you um, would look forward to most? Any aspect of the job? Uh, I mean, definitely working with the community. As far as um, I mean, I lo I love working with kids and family, and that's kind of why I really wanted to do it. You know, that that aspect really kind of interests me and mm -hmm. excites me. Were you able to watch our last town board meeting with our ping pong powerhouse? I know I was no. not no. Working um, with the community. <laughs> I, we, it's on YouTube. You can watch. Yeah, I mean we, we have uh, the senior community is a big part of the activities at the uh, recreation center, so it'd be worth watching that uh, meeting and getting to know. We um, asked for three references. Oh. So uh, you have one very glowing one from Chuck for Dino, but we would need two more. Sure, I think so. You can just give that to Neil right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, any other, anything we we might not have asked you want to add in, or does anyone else have any other things they want to ask? And... I don't think so. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay, uh, item number two, uh, they said they could not make it this evening, so we're going to just kind of... That, I, I, Ivan. Oh, yeah, I, I thought he had said he couldn't come tonight. I was surprised to see him on the agenda. He wanted to come to the next one. So. Okay. Uh, okay. So okay. Uh, we, we just got the email today uh, saying... Okay. Um, and so number three, um, uh, this is uh, Christina Perez. You can, uh, if you want to... Hello. Uh, and this is an interview. She asked if she could do it on Zoom, and okay. we're allowed to do that. And so, uh, if uh, outside, 
Pardon? Well, she's outside. <laughs> yeah. Only so th this is uh, <laughs> this is an idea for potential public access TV committee member uh, Christina Perez. So I'd mm -hmm. like to uh, turn it over to you and introduce is yourself. Is there a way we can enlarge the speaker? Yeah, you can. Thank you. Um, so my name is Christina Perez. Um, I am a working graphic artist in film and television in New York State. Um, I recently moved to New Paltz um, in November uh, with my husband, uh, Darshan, who is also in this meeting. <laughs> um, and we were just, well, I was looking for a way to get involved and I saw that there was availability on the public access television um, committee. And I thought I would be pretty well suited <laughs> um, given my experience in film and TV in this area. So you did a lot of work on productions in the Hudson Valley is what, so you got to know the area pretty well. Have you had a chance to watch Channel 23? So I have tried to, um, I have watched, <laughs> I have okay. watched what is available on YouTube. <laughs> um, I have done some looking into the web. I do see a lot of room for improvement on the website um, in terms of getting a more digital presence. Um, but I am very interested in learning more about it from any, anyone who's in the know. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you want to just elaborate on anything in your background that you uh, that pertains to the the role? Yeah. So, um, in college, I was particularly active in the uh, student run production company, which worked in tandem with uh, WUFT. I went to the University of Florida, um, which is the NPR slash PBS branch there. Um, I developed a lot of uh, independent content for WUFT while I was there um, and have since gone on to work in union narrative television. Um, a lot of it uh, based in New York City, um, but some of it now increasingly in the Hudson Valley as more studios open up in the region. Um, a little bit more about me, I most of my degree was focused on television programming. Um, so that involves dealing with all the producer releases and um, finding content for television. <laughs> um, I also have a background in economics, um, specifically a, <laughs> I have a, a degree in economics with a focus in developmental um, economics. So there is a background in more like the financial aspects of television producing as well. Um, a lot of that stuff that I learned over there, I moved over to when I was doing producing at a smaller scale in Gainesville um, in making, you know, the, the financial part of TV work. <laughs> um, yeah. Great. Okay. So what what do you understand about the town's public access TV role? So I think one like one of the fundamental things about television, especially broadcast television, is that it is a public good and that it is something that like everyone should have access to as like the um, as the Federal uh, Communications Commission like has stated many times. Um, so it is, I think, vital in being a platform to make content that is specifically for, or not specifically for, but gets at the heart of what is important to our community. Right now, a lot of what I've seen on at least the YouTube channel is um, like sort of like video montages of events that have happened in town. Um, as well as statements put out by like political representatives. Um, I think, especially with SUNY New Paltz in New Paltz, like there's an opportunity to showcase some more narrative work that um, students are developing, um, which not only adds to like 
our um, cultural presence in New Paltz, but also gives something for those students to be able to like later on, like I did, go and say like, I've done this before in maybe a bigger media market. Um, so I think there's there's an avenue there to really pull on those creative resources that we already have. Are you at all familiar with the equipment that the, com the committee currently has? So um, I did find a couple of news articles detailing that the equipment hasn't really been updated in the past couple of years. Um, I haven't found anything detailing exactly what that equipment is, um, but I would love to look at it <laughs> um, if given it Sounds like you've done a lot of research okay. on this, so. Um... You know, I my bad for not reaching out to you Monday when the Public Access TV Committee met uh, Monday night, and you could have met them and introduced yourself and learned a lot about the modulator, which is <laughs> obsolete. Um, you know, so there are some serious operational uh, challenges ahead of the committee. Um, you know, I I think you have so much enthusiasm and so many of the credentials. Um, would you be willing to just wait another month and attend a public access TV committee meeting and get to know everybody and let them get to know you. Is that yeah, absolutely. Okay, first Monday of every month. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And I apologize because I I should have picked up on that on Monday. <laughs> it's all right. Um, I appreciate you telling me now, though. That sounds like a great opportunity. Is it at the community thanks. center? At the community center. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks Excellent. for thanks for seven? offering to to be on the on the board. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah hope, hopefully, course. you still want to be on the board after you go to the meeting. <laughs> Maybe I should take that back. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Six yeah. thirty at the community center, first Monday of the month. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. It was wonderful seeing y'all. So, um, nope. so you you did fill out a form on a volunteer application form, and you also mentioned planning board alternate. Yeah, it did seem, it piqued my interest. I wasn't sure if I was the most well-suited candidate for that committee, um, but I I was also just kind of looking at ways to get involved. Um, so I th thought I'd throw my name in, <laughs> um, but you yeah. A planning board meeting too, and just see what happens there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, just, I, yeah, you can watch this online. Do thanks for you? just willing to be involved. I don't think so, you can do yeah. both, however. I think the planning board also meets on the first Monday. But no, it's okay. yeah. No? Yeah, yeah, for can, the third. Can, okay. Yeah, you can okay. Just getting involved is good. Yes. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Well, all right. Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. And nice to meet you too. Okay, so uh, uh, motion to approve and authorize items 4A through 4D on the consent agenda. Second, Julie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so number five, um, Kitty asked about the possibility of uh, hiring Millennium Strategies to do a uh, Safe Streets for and Roads for All grant. I did. You did. Wow. Uh, you sent an email saying, can we apply for this? Oh, okay. And uh, so I, 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 I was asking for that particular company. But well, that's okay. the company who writes grants. Got it. For okay. Us. So I asked them, you know, what for to give us an, uh, a quote for them to write the grant. And so um, I, I think it's on here. So we can have a discussion if people think this is worth something, um, worth the effort. The, the these grants are you know, number five. Yeah, I'm um, they will spend some time with our portal tonight. So um these um you know with the infrastructure uh funding for under President Biden, there's a lot more money for uh for project, you know, bike pad projects, safe streets for all. Uh but you can't get a safe streets for all construction grant unless you have a uh a plan 
in place. That's how they work it. So you have to write a grant to get the plan, the implementation plan, then you can write the grant to actually do the projects. So the, the first step is to write the planning grant and the, the type of planning grants they, they'll they do is they'll, you know, you if you get the grant, they you bring in consultants, they kind of do an assessment of the town, what improvements need to be made, you know, what what's the long-term plan to add bike pad infrastructure or things like that. And then it gives you kind of a, a roadmap going forward. Uh, but the first step is to get the, to do the safety assessment. They, they look at, you know, where the, where there may not be sidewalks, like where people may walk along a road like 208 and get killed. Right. And things like that. And so that, that's the first step. And I just wanted to, you know, the, uh, their, the standard is $150 per hour and it maxes out at uh, $4,500, depending on how long it takes, uh, how much effort it does to do the grant. So the, the deliverable would be the safety assessment? No, the deliverable would be the grant application for the safety assessment. Oh. Okay. Right. And then, um, you know, depending on what the grant amount is for, the town would then have to have a 20% match for that grant. Um. So I don't remember what the budget was for this company, but obviously $4,500 is within it. Um, it, it well, because it's uh, April right now, you know, but, you know, usually we, uh, I'm not sure we put in for the whole year, but I don't think the whole thing will cost 4,500, but right now we have that in the budget, but in June or July, when we're applying for more grants, there may be, we may have to find some money somewhere else, but it depends on, you know, we, I think we have at least five, $6,000 a year in the budget. Yes. Um, and the idea is that we pick and choose which grants uh, for priorities that we want them to write. These are, these federal grants are very complicated to write. So that's the, the rationale for hiring them. Just like the, um, the uh, Bridge New York grant. It was very complicated, so we hired them. You know, some of the other grants are less complicated. So, so the state streets and roads, what are we imagining would become safer if they're, you know, building more sidewalks or? Well, that's something? what the the grant mm -hmm. tells you what we needs have to be safe. Thing that we can imagine that we'd want. Well, we did have someone die recently, so that might be one. Um, so, is there a way we can partner with SUNY? on this i mean it's a state road i think we're most concerned about 208 i i don't know if i would say that's we're, we're more concerned with that because that's where the most recent accident happened but um you know we also had someone get hit on 32 this past year and almost died i'm surprised uh, we don't get people hit on main street with all the crosswalks we do and people in the dark and yeah you know. yeah. yeah and so what what the the, what they do is they do an assessment they um they come in, they, they look at speeds, they look at, you know, where are the accidents and, you know, what kind of improvements they can make. And then those are, uh, they, they base it sometimes on data, like how, what's the, you know, how many people are on the roads. And then that makes you competitive for the grants later on. Mm -hmm. Right. What is our time frame? Uh, I think the grant, there's, there's three different phases. There's, uh, we missed phase one. That, how, that was, uh, or the first cutoff that I think was March 21st. Uh, I think that the, the day after our day of our last meeting, um, and I think there's one in April and then maybe one in June. So, and, and there's no difference between first, second, or third. No, you just, that's when you submit them. So this is not, doesn't have to be done this meeting. It could be done at the next meeting. I and think I think June is not that far out. No, it's not. Um, but this company is very good. Like this is mm -hmm. what they do. Like they wrote that bridge, New York grant. <clears throat> They're professionals, like so. That's one of the benefits for working with them. And but so they write the grant application, but then if if we got the grant, then we'd have to hire someone else to do the safety assessment. Yes, um, you know, in the same way that we when we got the the TAP grant before, you form a committee, then that committee has to like put out requests for proposals. Uh, people, uh, different firms will give proposals, and then that committee has to rank them and show DOT why you chose that particular company. And then the consultants, then they can take over and do all the complicated stuff. 
but yes, it's a, a multi-step process. So the 20% match is 20% from us. If we get the if grant. We get the grant. Okay. Yeah. And the grant might be about what I, amount? Like a million to? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Planning grants aren't the same as construction grants. Yeah. You know, right. Just to the point. That's like right. maybe twenty five to thirty thousand. Yeah. You know, you know how much research right, right. has to be done and yeah. You know, and I, I and the they right they've written these grants for other municipal. Yeah. They this company covers like I think New York, New Jersey, parts of Pennsylvania. Like they have written these grants in the past. They know what the have right one. Any? I think they have. Yeah. <laughs> can we ask them how likely we are, or if we're a good candidate? Yes, we can. That would be a good thing to ask because mm -hmm. we've run into that before where we're competing with That's all the true. Northeast plus Puerto Rico. And, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. if we're way off, then maybe we. Yeah, I mean, and this, uh, that's I, one of the reasons I like working with this company. They, that's okay. one of their expertise. So we can ask what are our chances. Right. And so SE asked about the timing for this, the application to go in for this grant. And then the next phase would be just. So is there a phase for when you have to spend the money by the grant? If you were to get the grant, when you have to spend it by? Um, I mean, that's usually that's in the grant. Um, you know, the planning ones are a lot less complicated than the construction ones. Mm -hmm. But usually it's like, I think, two or three years. And the program's set up. I mean, it, the money won't be all gone. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, it depends who wins in November. The uh, the different parties have different priorities, and I know uh, some of the priorities are to remove funding for the infrastructure. Okay, well, let's start. So, so you would get back to us with the their yeah. We'll talk about it at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Um. So uh, next is a motion to authorize the hiring of Scott Harrington at the rate of $23 an hour, not to exceed 220 hours as a seasonal laborer to replace Avery Herring with a start date of April 6th, 2024. And this is for B&G, is that right? No, this is for the pool? Okay. Second, Julie. All in favor? I, right. I'm not seeing that here, but probably what number is it? Six. Six. Okay. Um, so number seven is a uh, motion to discuss the permitting of alcohol at the Field of Dreams and the community center. So this people have used these in the past. Um, I think we're allowed to give out maybe a half dozen a year. Um, they fill out the, the form. They get like a single day permit from the, uh, what the, uh, was it, uh, state alcohol division or something like that uh, but we just need to approve it and so they're the ones that are there it's so like if someone's having a birthday party or a wedding or something like that they're following the rules and saying what they're going to do or not do and so and they get done this before so yeah. this, but this application is just a blank application it doesn't say who's it would be it or authorizing me to sign after they fill out the application so like the owner of the property has to agree in the end, if you go down to the bottom of the page. I, I the saw that, but I just wasn't. So, and I think this is for a birthday party someone's having at the Field of Dreams on the, the so, April 13th. So the landlord is the town? Yes. Okay. And this is for a 21 year old birthday party? I don't know, the, I think it's a, I don't think it's 21, I think it's a adults. Why hasn't the application been completed? Why what? Hasn't the application been completed? Because we have a blank one. Because they fill out the application and they turn it into um, the state mm -hmm. for how long? We don't um, have the application. No, we don't. Because I wanted you to be aware that you're serving alcohol with field of dreams when there's kids playing on the fields. And you should know this. It says, mm -hmm. yeah, the prohibitive was the permit is acquired from the New York State Liquor Board. So. Okay. So if, does the town have any liability if, I don't know, if there's if under underage age, people yes. are served? Or, I mean, the, the Field of Dreams feels like a different situation than the community centers. Yeah. Okay. 
Awesome. Well, we do kids do programming there as well. Yeah. Do they want to have, they want to be in both places? Yes. I don't understand on this. Um, people who have parties, they don't want to have a patient mm -hmm. with the same alcohol mm -hmm. or whatever, and then the town signs it. They used to be charged, and they'd sign it, and they would have alcohol on the premises that you are responsible for. Oh, I'm you sorry. need to be aware of. So previously, Chuck signed it, and we we did not approve. We and didn't need to approve. You didn't even know. But but the to know. municipality would be responsible. Yeah, sure. like who checks IDs and so there's someone who wants to have a, a party on the 13th. Is that what that is? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. At the Field of Dreams. Yeah, probably renting the pavilion. Which is, you know. And do we know the time frame of the party? It's daytime. I mean, I, I don't have any comfort. Yeah, I don't either. We don't have to. We don't have to approve it. The application. Yeah, I mean, we we also have one. You know, I, we have one more meeting. We could do it. Well, we don't have an unmeeting, right? We've not, not have okay. so, Have we run this past our town attorney? Mm -hmm. This whole process. It just feels well, like. Maybe we should just get an opinion on what well, the town's liability we, well, is when we give out a, a liquor license. Well, the, we're not giving out the liquor license. Right. The so state liquor authority is. Right. But the landlord yeah. authorized But we have to approve it. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, I mean, we can run this by the town attorney, and obviously we won't be approving this one. I just don't know how we approve something we don't see. Okay. That's okay. But when we've gotten the application in, the application went from the person who made the renovation directly to the state. But, but they and still I, need our approval without our viewing of the application. I, am I confused by this? There's a form. Yeah. 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 Well, I, obviously, we're not going to do it. Right? I'm not. So I don't see why we should. Okay, that's fine. Let's go. Okay. We still have a lot on the agenda. Um, just one question though, going forward, is there an opportunity to see the application or that's not an option? It is an option. Okay. I, um, I mean, that's what I would ask for. But I think you should run it by Joe. Yeah. And um, I think we should find out from the insurance company exactly what the liability is mm -hmm. to us. Uh, if someone were to drive away from the field of dreams. Oh, we are I, I'd be interested in hearing what the police chief thinks about it too. Yeah, and how we keep the kids from the party. Very large area. So we have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So it looks like not this party. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So um, we're going to skip number eight. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is a motion to accept and approve the retirement of Chief Robert Lucchese. Effective May 30th, 2024. And if we don't accept, <laughs> will we stay? Can we make him stay? Can we keep him? Yes. Um, I just want to say thank you, um, Jesse. Uh, a little sooner than I anticipated, but um, you be retiring the last day of May 30th. Um, it's my letter. And I just want to thank you all for the last four years, especially. Um, it's been a great, you know, it's been a great ride. It's been 31 years. Um, still thanks Dennis and Paul and Bruce Keaton for taking a chance on me. Uh, all those years ago, and, uh, it's, it's been good. So, uh, but you know, you need some very capable hands here. And I think that two people won't be able to you know, continue to move on and support the community and they're going out good. And so I'm very happy. Uh, so. Out of here. Rob, this is a lovely letter that you wrote to Supervisor Gattaz, and it really, it, it has a lot of heart in it and, you know, respect and love for our community. And I will never forget after um, the, uh, the turmoil of the Black Lives Matter marches going on throughout the country and the, our community went to the police department and said, where do you stand on this? Getting a little teary here. And you wrote a, a beautiful letter about civil rights and human rights in our community. 
And and I, I think you really exemplify what we look for in our police department. It's going to be hard to say goodbye. It's been uh, an amazing four years. You know, it's just remind people, I think you were sworn in uh, mid-March 2020, and then the world fell apart. <laughs> and uh, it didn't here. And I, and I think that's largely due to your leadership and I think the foundation that you built within the department. And that's why I'm very excited that we're going to hopefully be promoting from within because I think we have very good people there. And, um, you know, we read the paper, you know, watch the news. Other places have had much more problems than we have. And I think our police department is, I think, one of the best around. And I think that's due to the leadership of, you know, Chief Snyder, Chief Lucchese, and I think the, the people that we're hopefully going to be promoting today. They're more than capable, and I believe that they are going to um, do a better job than I could. I think that they are, they're ready, and, and so I'm excited for them. And, and, and I can vote that they will um, make the recommendations to the commission. Um, and, and I'm really excited to see where they get from All right. I have always felt, you know, so happy to have you at the helm of the the police department, especially during these tumultuous times, it's just been, it's been outstanding and, and we're going to miss you. Yes. Yeah. And I just have to say yay for electric vehicles. Hopefully we'll get it before I leave. Okay. Julie. All in favor. Aye. 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 And so thank you. And the walkout ceremony will be that day. Uh, oh. walk out. Yeah. <laughs> and so just so I'm uh, for number nine and number 10, the police commission has uh, recommended that we make these promotions. We met, um, we met the, obviously I've been in conversation with the commission throughout all of this and uh, we uh, we had interviews last week, and um, both of these recommendations were really brought forward by the police commission. I'm not sure we're doing kind of stuff, and we're starting to do that. So we're very comfortable with that. We feel very comfortable with that. And you know, we had iterated earlier the, the direction that we're in, and continuing to be promoting internally to continue that process. Uh, do people want to have a uh, 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 Mr. Officer Sutton come up and talk? Do you want to come on up and um, if in case they, Lieutenant Sutton, I guess. And... Have a seat. Have a seat, please. Thank you for joining us. I don't think we've met that seat. And so um, thank you for stepping up. And um, I don't know if you want to say anything or there was any specific questions they want to ask you. Or... You look familiar. <laughs> that... We met a few times. Did you? Yeah. We met a few times when I was detective sergeant. Yes. Okay. I grew up here in New Paltz. I'm grown. New Paltz schools. I was one of the work in the New Paltz community. I was fortunate enough to do that starting in 2008. And I've made my way through the ranks since then. I've loved every minute of it. It's always been a goal of mine to be the chief of police here, and hopefully that'll be the case. I'm very excited. And your mom works at Doozy in Elementary. Still does. <laughs> My mother and sister are the yes. Jen and Chris in the office. Mm -hmm. so. Do you have any like goals for the police department under your you know for you what you'd like to see? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think we have a great foundation. I would be lying if I sat here and said anything otherwise. Chief Snyder, Chief Lucchese, have done a fantastic job. And I just keep 
moving forward, you know, growing with the times. You know, the world is constantly changing, let alone police work is changing every day. So that's the biggest part, I think, you know, we're not going to be left in the dust, you know, not to say other agencies are, but I think we really make a good effort at staying ahead, you know, ahead of the curve and just keeping up with that with everything, the way we police, technology. Yeah. So, I mean, some of them, I'm, I'm reading like, and towns are debating whether getting body cams. And I'm like, we did that like seven years ago. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Give me That's a break. Like, you know, staying ahead of the curve that way when the state or government or whatever comes down with a mandate. That's exactly it. It's like we've been doing that for five years, <laughs> you know, and that's just keeping that going. And do you see like community interaction as a hundred percent? That's that's it's been that way since day one. I walked in the door, and as long as I'm here, it's going to continue to be that way. You know, the biggest part, as far as I'm concerned, is community policing. We have to be involved with the community, and we want the community to be involved with us. You know, that's ultimately that's our job. We serve the community. So I don't remember which chief it was started by, like, come have coffee or... Oh, well, that was Ross. Uh, chief. I think it started with Chief Snyder, maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, obviously, with the COVID pandemic and everything else, when Chief Lucchese took over, it's, you know, made it a little bit harder. But, yes, it's, that's a great thing. Do we still have the bike patrol? I we know. do. Okay. Yeah, we, you know, with retirements and things like that, we don't have as many officers that are certified because you have to take a special course. To be on bicycle patrol, but we still have a couple officers that are certified and sergeant, a detective, and I think one officer. Yeah, look into e bikes. Mm -hmm. They're nice. Yeah. I actually think I we tested one out maybe five, six years ago. Um, but you know, technology has grown so much since then. Yeah. The one complaint or request that I get is asking if we could. Um, be out on the rail trail a little more often and just help um, so just modify sometimes some of the speed that people are, you know, cycling and also just, you know, trail etiquette, dogs off leash and stuff. I don't know that you necessarily need to tangle with an off leash pit bull, but, um, you know, it, if you could get out there bike or e-bike, you know, occasionally, um, that would be great. I think our officers make a good effort. You know, okay. we, obviously we can always do more, but all of our officers are expected to walk foot patrol and predominantly they walk foot patrol on lower main street in the village. And mm -hmm. a part of that is walking the golf trail, but great. it's always something we can always okay. add more. Thank you. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Matthew Sutton, to the rank of Chief of Police, effective May 31st, 2024. Second, Julie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, you got the next one is uh, Comrade Fuco. Do you want to okay. kind of come up and? Hi. Hello. 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 So thank you for okay. also stepping up. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, I don't know if you want to think you met most people, but if you want to, anyone have any questions or things I want to talk about? I'll give you a little yeah, intro. Yeah, yes. um, same like now, Chief uh, Sutton, I'm I'm local. I was born and raised in New Paltz. Um, We like keeping things homegrown because we have a vested interest in our community. I've already raised one son into adulthood in New Paltz, and I started over, and I have another child that's going through the school system. So our main concern is our community. And, you know, we, we like to find most officers that work with us are from our community. It's just we have a vested interest. As far as the community policing, I know that was a thing you mentioned with the chief Sutton. I'm, I'm actually a community policing officer. So, and that's a very big thing for me. And it's uh, love being engaged in it, you know, as far as we are very involved in planning the holiday hoopla, the Easter egg hunts, anytime somebody needs a tour, but the, the youth groups, um, just all sorts of community outreach. Um, it's very big to us. You know, policing is different in the different communities that you go to. People think that being a cop is the same everywhere you go, and it's not. Mm -hmm. New Paltz is a different type of policing than, let's say, Poughkeepsie, let's say, 
or somewhere in, in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. or I take pride in in how we police. I take pride in like the Chief Sutton was saying, like I like saying <laughs> um, we like being ahead of the curve. And a lot of things that people say, oh, we wish the police would do this. We, we, we've been doing that. Yeah. So my plan for the future is, you know, I'm very um I'm very proud of our base. I'm very happy with the way things are going and what we are doing with training. The training is very, very, very big, especially now that we have a lot of young officers. Mm -hmm. And I've been a lot involved in a lot of training, and actually New Paltz Police Department is known for being well trained. Mm -hmm. And I want to I want to continue that. Um, Neil, you know the amount of training we receive, and yes. it's you know, compared to other agencies in Ulster County, mm -hmm. we are by far one of the, the best training. And I I think training is very, 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 very important, whether it's tactical training, whether it's, you know, ethical issues, whether it's uh, social issues. Yeah. I we, encourage the board members to go, you know, to participate in the training sometime. You'll be amazed at the the, the difficulty and yeah. the the level that the officers are held to. And and I think what, what I have seen is I read things and something that happens in another town. I'm like, there's no way that would have happened here. Right. Like that, that would have been addressed in training. And, it, and and then they say, well, we're following the rules. I'm like, not this standard of rules that we have. And I think that people don't realize how many problems have been avoided. They're like, well, the, the, the training costs a lot of money. It's like, well, it's cheaper to have good training than to exactly. have good uh, attorneys. And I think we already, we already have a great foundation on that. And being that our department is so young, it's even more important now than at any point in mm -hmm. police department history. So and just holding, to continue with the training. And right holding now. on to people, right? It's hard, that? it's hard to hold on to officers nowadays, it right? Yeah, so. yeah, but, you know, it's, it seems to be a national problem. Yeah. So. But, you know, it's it's a very welcoming department as far as, you know, it's a community-oriented police department. So I'm just, I'm glad to be part of that as far as, you know, where I want to see see the department going. I, I like the path we're on. We're very big on transparency. You guys all know that. As far as everything that we do, we're very receptive to community uh, ideas, mm -hmm. suggestions. And we try to listen as much as we can. You know, I do believe in law and order, but I also do believe in, you know, and being kind and, you know, showing discretion and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm happy to be here. Like I said, I was born and raised here. Nothing I wanted more than to make my little portion of the world safer for my family. Do y'all work with the schools? So what do you mean by working with the schools? Well, I grew with um, drug prevention, things like that. Well, we canceled the D.A.R.E. program. So. Yeah, we don't have the D.A.R.E. program. We, As far as our outreach with the community and the schools, we, we don't have a school resource officer, but as much as we can, especially during the sh day shift, and it's kind of one of those hey, mandatory officers are walking in schools. Mm -hmm. You're not handling a poll. You're not on a traffic stop. Mm -hmm. You're going to walk to school. It's going to be random. It's going to be high school, mm -hmm. middle school, let it be. And mm -hmm. I'm a very yes, strong believer in that. Not not more for the safety aspect that some people see it. It's just more building the relationships. Yeah. The relationships. And, and when you're coming, yeah. training exercises that you know, yes. the, the, the police and the fire department and the rescue department, they regularly work with the schools. Yes. Um, so it's not when when something does go wrong, it's not like, who do I call? What do I do? Yeah. It, there's there's practices, procedures and protocols. And it's, you know, we do not have officers in schools. I know that's a big debatable issue, but that New Paltz school does not want that. But we have a relationship where, tell, correct me if I'm wrong on this, that officers are regularly um uh, on school property in case they're needed, they're available and they know exactly what to do when they're called. Right. And there's, there's that aspect of it. There's also the aspect of they get to know us. How many times I'm in shop, right? <laughs> hey, so if you go, and I love when the kids come up to you because you don't want kids to be afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just, that's just part of another thing that we do is just building the community trust with the kids. I've, I'll just say I'm in classrooms at Duzi in elementary sometimes. And if an officer passes, you know, I, I see him look kind of smile, has a certain smile on his face because he knows he's a bit of a celebrity. And, you know, so we all get pretty excited yeah. for like, yeah, the, yeah. all the smiles and the waves. So it, that's a really nice sign that uh, to start him really young, uh, just yeah. feeling comfortable. And the like, reason why New Paltz is unique is we, we, you know, we're able to do things like that, mm -hmm. you know, with the community. So, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm very, very, very proud. I'm, I'm, Chief Sutton and I, I know him personally, and where he, we've had 
conversations of where he sees the department going, and I fully, um, you know, support him. He has the same vision as as, as I did, so I think it will be a, a great combo. You know, we don't really butt heads. I don't think we've ever argued. If this is what I work. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I want to do. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Well, I I met Lieutenant Oko. I hope cool. I'm not jumping. Uh, on the two hardest days of my life, yeah. um, the death of my mother, the death of my husband. I was there. And I can tell you that the um, mixture of professional compassion and kindness on, you know, the worst days of my life yeah. were very comforting. You got me through a terrible time. Thank you. And I, I think that's probably one of the great, the greatest qualities mm -hmm. that we can ask in our police department. Why do we do the job, you know? I don't I don't do the job to be like, hey, I get to write a ticket. But <laughs> I, I I'm gonna go home with my my heart full from that story, not from I wrote a ticket to a guy who ran a stop. Right. You know? Right. So I appreciate that. I really do. Well, it means a lot. You were greatly appreciated to me Thank and you. my family that day. Thank you. Those days. Thank you. Are you guys ready? And the best part of it is it it trickles down to all the officers mm -hmm. who work under you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Uh, uh, does someone else want to make the motion? Or? Uh, no, I think you should make the motion. Okay. Uh, second. Motion <laughs> motion to approve the appointment of Carmine Fuco to the rank of lieutenant, effective May 1st, 2024. Second, Kitty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number 11 is, um, we've been doing, I think this is probably the third year now, but this is a motion to authorize the approval of the No Mo May resolution. Second, Julie. So can you have, can I ask a question? Sure. Okay, so what I, I read is that we won't write any tickets to anybody for not mowing the grass. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Would we take it any further and the town might participate in some particular way, like on town properties? Can we do that? It's not in the resolution. It's not in right. the... Uh, yeah, I mean, like what... Um, you know, the fields we need to mow <laughs> for the for the kids. Well, right. What about the big field? Uh, who mows the big field at the um, on the way to uh, the dog park? That big, empty field that, you, you know, it's surrounded by the road, the dirt road. Do we mow that or does the county mow that? Before or after... We, we mow the field of greens every day. Down the access road, that's the county barrier. By the horse arena, that's the county barrier. The I think uh, the maybe it's the one where potentially the, um, you know, as you as you go up to the field and you want to go to the dog park, you take a right yeah. at that area right there. But we don't mow that weekly, right? That no, usually it's too wet. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, the like, longer we could hold off knowing that would be awesome because we do have milkweed and other pollinating stuff. Our problem is we don't keep up on it. We it's can't. Too we've got too much hay. Yeah. So unless you, you, you can let it go for a cycle, you know, a week. When we get mowing, it's once a week. We have to know. When you go two weeks, whatever we mow, now we have to clean up the grass, which increases our work. And, and it's also very hard on your machines, right? And you, put, and you can't. Stuff is not made to do tall grass. It's made to make it smaller. Okay. I understand your, your point. Yeah. I mean, it's full of wildflowers and, you know, all the stuff that we're trying to protect with no more May. Use your discretion. If you could go an extra day or two or three, that would be great. Hmm. So what I, I think what I noticed is along Chestnut there by the community center, there was a strip. So here's the sidewalk up here. Here's the street mm -hmm. down here. And so it looked like there was an effort to leave some yes. part of yeah, it. Yeah, we only mow that once a year now. In between Stewart's and the community center. It's yeah, that, we stopped doing that at all. They planted some right. pollinating flowers. Yeah. It's very... I, don't, we, I thought we did it once a year, but maybe we don't even mow that anymore. We, have, we, don't, we haven't mowed it in a year. So you could stick us yeah, mm -hmm. the calendar. Sure. But this is yeah, cool. you know, that'd be cool. Okay, tomorrow's National Dandelion Day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. By being an elementary school teacher. 
Uh, so uh, anyone uh, second the motion? I think I did. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so number 12 is the motion that we talked about this to uh, an executive session weeks ago, but motion to authorize um, and, a, and so authorized to, uh, for the supervisor to sign the um, memorandum of agreement uh, with the uh, New Paltz Police Association Incorporated. This is for the contract. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, yes, um, I'll second. Um, I can, we can fill you in on it, but this, uh, we've been working on this for six months now. And this is the, the contract for the next five years, I think. So. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Kitty seconded. Okay. Rosanna. And uh, great. Thank you. Uh, a lot of work went into that. So, okay. um, so uh, then number 13th items that were added to the original, the, to the agenda since the original posting. So um, this is a motion to authorize adding monthly purchase orders, one for uh, the new Toshiba lease in the town clerk's office, one for the building department's temporary agreement, and also uh, request them to be authorized prepays. Um, and this is just so we, we've already pre-approved them so we can pay the monthly bills and we're not late. Right. So just like we have the same thing for electric bills and we don't have to like get board approval and then we get the late charge. So that's what this is for. So, I'm sorry, did you already make that? Yeah. yeah. I I mean, I, I guess we already approved the idea of hiring Norman staffing, but can you explain this is twelve hundred dollars? This is I this is to pay. This is also temporary while we're going through the civil service. So we have someone in the uh, in the billing department. So this is to pay that person. This is to pay that person. To pay the hiree, yes. not Norman staffing. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. I feel it much better. It was a little yeah. confusing, but I figured. Okay. Yes. We, yeah. we, we pay them and then they pay Excellent. their employee. Okay. So Great. they just, they bill us and then they, the check is from them. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Someone, did someone second that? <laughs> no, Julie did. Okay. Second. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And so uh, number the next one is uh, Diane Lee. Um, I don't know if you've met Diane. She's yeah. um, has been the assist, assessor's clerk for a couple of years now. She worked in the building department before. She has been uh, taking classes, getting her training, um, we ran her credentials by the um, the state, and she is now qualified to be what is it interim. Uh, she she can be appointed to be assessor. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working with an uh, an assessor from another town and paying them hourly because we needed to have someone with the, enough of the credentials to qualify. Uh, but the plan has always been to uh, for Diane to kind of move up and step in. And so she now has, we have a letter from the state that's in there saying that she can now be appointed. And this is, is this one of the, um, is this one of those ones that you have to ask the people on the list for? Nope. Uh, uh, no, assess assessors are appointed by the board. Um, and unless, I guess, I guess some towns have them, I don't know if they're elected in some towns, but not really anymore. But they're appointed. So it's not a civil service position. Okay. So. Have we been sharing her with the SOPIS? And... No. Hmm? No. No, she's been working full time for the town as the um, the assessor's clerk, right? Okay. Um, while we've been uh, sharing the assessor with a SOPIS who comes in and has helped been helping with training I... and, you know, signing the, the documents where you need like a certified assessor to sign. Okay. So because, you know, our assessor left before right. and this has always been an interim solution until we could move our person up and they were certified. Okay. And so now we have that. So this is a really great example of supporting hiring from within. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So, um, do I have a second? Amanda seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, 
So this uh, next one is um, right now the uh, the planning zoning board secretary. Um, we have been uh, her regular their regular forty hours a week include going to the meeting uh, for planning board and ZBA and what we're fine. And then usually they would take those if they worked four hours at a planning and zoning board meeting, then they could have four hours of flex time and they could leave early on a Friday uh, or whenever come in late on a different day. Um, what we're finding is because we're understaffed, um, they're unable to keep up with all the work and they would want to like just use like work 44 hours a week. Uh, but that's not allowed under the current contract. And so this is, we're saying it's allowed um, going forward if they need to work the extra hours. Or given compensatory time. Or, yeah, they get to choose. So do we have the budget to handle it if the choice is to with the overtime? Uh, well, I think this, the supervisor still has to decide whether they're allowed to uh -huh. authorize the overtime. That's my understanding. Is that right? Am I wrong on that? You know, under the under the, the contract, uh, under the contract, they still have to talk to their supervisor and say, "I would like to, you know, take the overtime." And the supervisor still then gets to decide. Well, what's your workload? Uh, do we have it in the budget? And, and then they can say, "No, you know what? Don't do the extra forty hour. Don't do the extra hours." So it's it, this isn't guaranteeing that it's going to happen every single week, but it's making it so if they need her to work the extra hours to get things done, then they can. So, uh, you know, especially during this time of year when the planning board is very busy to make sure that they can keep up on everything. And will this uh, temp clerk take some of the load off? Will that help at all? Is that going to relieve some of the They're pressure? separate jobs, like the planning board and then the planning zoning secretary are separate positions. So, you know, it may help a little bit, uh, but they are two different positions. Okay. I mean, just because you said being understaffed. So I was just wondering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is your feeling on this? Uh, I mean, I think it gives the flexibility. It, it doesn't guarantee one thing or the other. It just, um, you know, if suddenly it's it's not working, the board can always, you know, change it later going forward. But right now, it's just not allowed under the the current rules. So this is now authorizing the department head to make the decisions and allow her to you know work the the full 40 or 44 hours with overtime if they need it to get done say there's lots going on or he can say you know what don't do it this week right i i'm just i'm i don't know how often it's going to happen i just know that this allows them to be more flexible with what's going on we could try it yeah yeah anyone just revisit it after i don't know yeah. months or something see what mm -hmm. yeah a month may be short but yeah, yeah. Well, i was saying three months three yeah, months like is what she proposed yeah um so we can override the rules by creating an mou is that yeah the contract? okay and when is the contract you're, up for well, you're overriding the, you're making an mou to the union contract yeah, and, and then, but we can also, if you want, we can put something in there that we want to do a, a three month test mm -hmm. with yeah. the MOU. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Second. Second, anyone? Oh, second, Amanda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so, number. Uh, D is, this is a motion authorized for the town to prepay the copy hut, a deposit to purchase no more May signs for purchase by residents. So you, you have to order a certain number of signs. And so the residents can't just say, I want to order a sign because you have to order like 10 or something. Mm -hmm. And so the town, like the last two years, the town has bought, I don't know how many, uh, you know, the minimum number or maybe 20 or something. And then residents come in and pay for them. And so it's, cost right they pay 15 it costs the town 15. yes yeah we're not subsidizing them but we're just doing a group purchase okay. uh and so then it maybe be there. And it just makes it easier for people and they they've always all disappeared mm -hmm. very quickly um but it, it no one's going to order 10 signs uh and even when we've had extra they disappear the next year so 
Oh, yeah, we're ordering 24. We'll yeah. Need to them, so. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, second. All in favor? Anyone? I'll second. Okay. Um, okay. Katie, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, so uh, E is the uh, motion for the supervisor to sign off on the municipal parks and recreation sub award agreement. So we got a grant from the county, um, I think $100,000 um, to put towards the Henry W. Project. And so this is authorizing me to sign this so we can get the money from them and spend it. The Henry W. Du Bois uh, Bike Ped Project. Oh. So Which what exactly what so it's a, only a part of it, right? It's, it's only a, part of it. But the town, the town board authorized, uh, accepted the bid in December. Um, we based on DOT's final approval, they have given final approval, and so the project's moving forward. And so, uh, it should be starting probably, hopefully, we're going to have a meeting, I think, with the contractors in the next month or so. But hopefully, the project will be starting sometime this spring and hopefully done by the fall. Almost hundred thousand will cover the whole thing. No, no. So, what, so what's going to actually happen? That's what I'm. This this saying. helps cover the towns some of the towns costs. You know. So is this part of your match, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I didn't see the name of Henry W. Du Bois in here anywhere. I I didn't know where this hundred thousand dollars was going. I thought it was going to Field of Dreams actually, no. but how do we know where? It just doesn't say anything about Henry W. Du Bois in here. Uh, I wrote the grant, so I know that's where it's going. Um, and, well, well done writing the grant, but could we but, just put it in here somewhere, Henry W. Du Bois? You could put that in the motion. That this, okay. you know, the motion to authorize the supervisor to sign the the uh, grant award from the county for use for the Henry W. Du Bois project. Second. Duly seconded. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I can't wait. Thanks for the update. Um, the last, I know we just found Thanks out. For the, been, grant. <laughs> uh, the last one is the uh, text from the mayor, but did, uh, then we have executive session, but did people have a chance to review the two proposals from the consolidation consultants? There was, I had a problem looking at the video. There, there wasn't. Have you seen the written documents? No. Well, we should probably hold off until you get a chance to read them. Okay. Yeah. I, well, I saw part of it and and I I got a little confused. So it seems like we're sort of uh, changing focus from coterminous to a new town. And so I I just need I, to I agree I agree with you. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's not what we talked about in January. Yeah. Um and, and I do think that's has to be explained by whichever consultant. Um gets the award. And I think it really needs to be explained well to the voters. You know, they need all of the information before. Uh, and I think that the the hope is that the consultants, you know, their job is to make sure that everyone's well informed and can make the right decision. You know, but, but I think we uh, have an obligation as board members to pick the right consultant. And so if everyone could like review that and we can talk about it at our next meeting and right. let them know. So let's make sure that the the written RFQs are available and you get a chance to read them before we meet next time. Okay. okay thanks. And if there's any video presentation. Oh. I think they have recordings of that. We do, um, but they refer to the written proposals. And if you if you can't sort of follow mm -hmm. the proposal, it's, uh, it's hard to make a better yeah. decision. I, I just wasn't clear that because we started off with coterminous, so that's what they were asked to Evaluate, or was it just consolidation in general, whichever, whatever it might be? So right. I don't know if what they were going to do would be different if it was a new town versus a coterminous versus something. Well, I, I that's don't a think good that's question. Been decided, but I think that's the purpose of hiring the right consultant is which direction should we go? Um, or, well, okay. I mean, I mean, you have to, yeah. Well, we all need to read the R2. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, motion to go to executive session for Have personnel. Through everything here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Second, yeah. Julie. Okay. All right. Oh, can okay. you save the topic, please? Or personnel. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. 
I kept the confidence, you know. Tony, the Tori told me that uh, oh, she was was she didn't enjoy the fire yeah. part of it. He said, Don't worry about that. Yeah. 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 That was probably my first hit that would make a change. Transition. Yeah. 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 Uh, not, very well. Well. not very well. That's all right. We got a lot of planes that wow. Can you hit a mailbox? Uh, yeah, that, that's part of the part of the trade. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Very happy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you have to say for that. And I have to say, Frank, I hope choose engaged citizenry. Good to hear it now. And <laughs> well, they can hear both. Right? It's very nervous. I'm going to head out. So you guys are going to know. So you won't have to be before. Oh, yeah, I trust you. I trust you. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I look forward to uh, I'll see you around. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you'll probably be the main contact person if the structure stays the same. For, yeah, for all the annoying questions. That's why we go to. Yeah. I don't recognize them. 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 That's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> All on town. Yeah, I know. Now that I was on TV. Oh, think of the fun now with Phoenix and Diane and you. It's going to be great. I'll get a new part. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's not going to change. Okay, okay. It's going to be great. 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 It's going to be Wait, no, it's not. It's 2020. Uh, but there were people who were walking down the street. It's a good thing. Officers are still. Maybe it wasn't walking around. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a count. I wasn't sure. Yeah, at that point, I was. No. I think I just got promoted to. Sorry. Yeah, because I wasn't sure of it. Yes. I remember that officer who was really good at. De escalation because <laughs> there was a little escalation that day. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take credit for that. I think it was one of the times with uh, I'll see what one of the other rally firms with uh, Cisco and there's comedy. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
All right, I'll be right out. All right, well, nice to see you again. I'll, I'll be reaching out. Oh, absolutely. I'm here. I hope, you don't, I hope you're not afraid of the spotlight. Not at all. Okay, sure. Good. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Oh, I'll be. I go ahead. Well, you know, you can try. Okay. Like, he didn't get very much. Oh. And, you know, you got to approach in a certain way. Before you go in and ask money from Josh, that's so nice. First, first, I throw it into the street. Yeah. Going on something, just turn around. It's not okay. today. Exactly. Well, yeah. It's a bit yeah, of a right, Next week. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Robert, call me. How many of you? Nice to see you all. Take yeah. care. The Ferrari? No, we do that. I don't know why you would be complaining. I'm going to keep saying that. That's the answer you need. It's true. It's true. Oh, it's just a bad Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Never do you When she said, Thank you. 
Oh, they all left. The kids left. <laughs> uh, so, motion to come out of executive session. Second, Amanda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, motion. That... Oh, I would like to make a motion to appoint John Decker to the ZBA. Second, Julie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the other issue that we discussed in executive session, and it um, it may be good news for some, it may be bad news for others, uh, but um, I am, like to make the announcement that I will be resigning my position as town supervisor, uh, I think in the beginning of May, I think it's May 3rd, Friday is my last day, and I will be starting a new position with the Hudson River Estuary Program as the Climate Resilience Program Manager. Um, my job is gonna be to work with scientists and elected officials on making our communities in the Hudson Valley more climate resilient using um, nature-based scientific approach, uh, which uh, if not everyone knows this, my background is before I was an elected official, I worked in science. And so it, uh, I'm not leaving because I dislike this job or dislike board members or the staff or anything. It's just that uh, this is a job I really want. Uh, and I think I um, could not apply for it. I'm very grateful that they gave it to me. Uh, but you know, as um, my wife has pointed out several times, we're not leaving this town. So I need to make sure that whoever replaces me keeps doing a good job. And so my commitment is to not just walk away from this job or any of it. It's to help out and keep doing as good a job as I can. But I'm going to be focused on my new job. But I am committed to not just walking away and hopefully letting things fall apart. And so uh, we've discussed it. And I don't know um, if people are interested in uh, you know, the board will be appointing my replacement. And if anyone is interested in being appointed to become town supervisor, um, it will be an appointment until the end of the year. And then the, the New Paltz Democratic Committee will be appointing someone to be on the ballot in November. And then that person will serve the, finish out the rest of what was my term. So that'll be one year. And then it'll be on the ballot again. And uh, because of the state, the way they changed the rules, 
with uh, they want to have elections on even years, it'll be a three year term. So there are um, multiple on ramps and off ramps. Uh, but if people are interested in helping out and stepping up and serving the rest of this year, uh, please contact assistant at town of New Paltz and the board will start reviewing um, those uh, letters of interest. Anything else I need to add? Congratulations. Right. This Thank is you. your dream job. We're sorry to see you go, but you're going where you really want to go. So well, good for you. are going to make a big contribution. Today. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And you certainly and we'll done a back terrific here, job. Part of your new job, right? I'll be talking to uh, you probably from that side of the table in the future about, you know, uh, things that you can implement, grants that you should apply for, things like that. Right. So, and I'll be doing it for lots of towns. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to communicate uh, from both sides, you know, like why it's hard to do these things and why you should do these things. Oh, you can, that's you're going to bring so much value to that position. Mm -hmm. so, so, thank you for all you've done. Yeah. Well, I'm here for another month. So <laughs> hopefully we can uh, cross a lot off the list. So thank you, everyone. And uh, well, thank you, I, I, It'll uh, be missed. Thanks. Um, where did Rob Casey go? <laughs> Relate to this, you know, he bought this job. <laughs> Any of you? Any of you? <laughs> uh, all right. Is, didn't well, it coincide a little bit with his retirement? I know. You know he's, he's, here, he's here a month longer. So, uh, oh, okay. motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. We didn't have any. Time to move the furniture.